Bitcoin is showing a major warning sign on the two-week chart. In fact, the first time we have seen this since March 2021. Is this the start of the end or are the bulls still in control? Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic weekend. In today's video, we're going to be doing a complete high time frame momentum analysis on the two week, the weekly, the three day, and of course the daily chart, discussing a couple warning signs that are popping up on these charts that we do need to be very much aware of. We're going to be discussing the relevance of these warning signs, what they mean for the price action, and whether or not we should be paying much attention to them. We'll also be jumping over to the short term charts, going over the recent price action, how the price action is currently developing, and what to expect moving forward. Before we do get into it, smash that like button, hit that comment button, and subscribe to the channel. We post daily videos for Bitcoin focusing on the facts, the data, the technical, and the structural information. No hype, no BS, no motion, pure raw TA. If that is the kind of content you're interested in, join us on Telegram. It is the third link down below. You'll get access to charts, updates, videos, educational posts, news events, and everything you need to stay in the loop of cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, and the relevant economic news. If you were interested in taking your trading to a new level, join our VIP group. We post trading setups with exact entries, exact targets, exact stop losses, trade justification, exclusive analysis, and so, so, so much more. You'll also get access to our group chats, our general chat, our trading chat, and education chat, our trade setup chat, our help chat, our news chat, our daily video chat. If you're interested in getting access to all of that, contact us in the pinned comment of the free channel for more information. Let's go ahead guys and dive into the video. So starting on what we'll be discussing. Like we said at the start of the video, we're going to be talking about momentum. We're going to be discussing the high time frame chart, specifically going over a momentum analysis on the weekly, the two week, the three day, and that daily chart, as we are seeing some major, major red flags pop up. Specifically, we're starting to see negative momentum shifts occurring at the overbought area on the marker cipher B across multiple time frames. So we're talking about really what this means and how it is significant. So let's start our video guys on that market data. Looking at the market data, 24 hour volume is down 29%, sitting at a total of 59 billion. Looking at 24 hour liquidations, we are down 50%, sitting at a total of 51 million. And of course, nothing that we have just read out is unexpected. It is the weekend, volume drops, liquidity drops. And of course, with that, we've seen liquidations drop. So a low volatility, low volume environment results in not all that much, pr not all that much price action, and thus, not a lot of chop, not a lot of range movement in the price section, and thus not a lot of liquidation. So we've only seen 40 million here in 24 hour liquidations, with 24 million coming from longs and 15 million coming from shorts. If we do take a look at the recent price section and what is happening right now, we can see really not all that much is happening. We've really just been pushing sideways actually since the start of this month. If we look at the whole month so far, we've seen the price section move within you know, this is about, what, two days and 16 hours into the month. So we've seen the price action move within a very small range. The range has been about 0.6%. So some of the smallest price action we've seen for a very long time has occurred within the last three days for the first couple of days of this month. So very unvolatile, very low um, volume overall, and of course, uh, very indecisive. Moving over to the DXY, we can see the DXY has actually had a bit of a god candle from that support level, pushing all the way up to the 104 mark. Again, support is support until it is not, and thus this area is going to be acting as a nice reversal point. We are still expecting a move to 105, provided this area can hold. If the support is able to hold, again, our next target is 105 to 105.5 zone. If we do lose that support level, we then look for the lower range of support. There's two red zones, our lower range of support, our upper range of resistance. This is the trigger point for the directional continuation in either one of those directions. Of course, a move downwards is bullish, a move upwards is bearish. Looking at the S&P 500, we actually came up and reached our target, right? We've been talking about that target of 5,000. For quite some time now, the 5,000 level was a psychological level of resistance. And since we are in price discovery, there is no historical data to suggest where the price is going to go 
but we can look at levels where people are likely going to be placing sell orders and generally people gravitate to whole numbers. So 5,000 was a logical area where a support or should I say a resistance would have been set and we did reach that 5,000 level after we broke above this range and we have now hit our target. So we are looking for short-term corrections from this 5,000 level. Again, this area being our major support. If we come back down and retest it, perfect. If we break below it, very bad. So we could see something like this, a correction back down here, reset and then continue back upwards. Of course, if we lose that local low range, this is 4,733, we'd expect a short-term correction back down to 4,500, very bad stuff. Moving over to the Dow Jones, hasn't quite hit that target we were looking for. We were looking for a move up to 39,000. So we ju just came shy of that around 38,920, still expecting a move up to that level in the new week, so keeping your eye on that one. Enough about all that, guys. Let's go ahead and jump over to Bitcoin before we do a quick word from BitGet and Bing X and we'll dive in. I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss the two exchanges we use on this channel, BitGet and Bing X. So which exchange should you sign up to? If you look to the right hand side of the screen, you're going to see the list of differences in relation to KYC requirements and the countries these exchanges offer services to. The first link down below being the BitGet link and the second link down below being the Bing X link. No matter which link you sign up to, you're going to get up to 15% discounts on your trading fees, up to 5,000 US dollars in trading rewards, and of course, you'll get access to every single MegaWow exclusive bonus campaign we run on these exchanges. Alongside that, BitGet and BingX are incredibly similar. They are both ranked top 10 in terms of trading volume. They both have extensive liquidity pools and market pairs offering up to 125x leverage. And most importantly, they both offer protection funds for the users to protect you against any third party hacks. So get started now and support the channel by clicking the links below. Thanks for listening. Okay, team, let's go ahead and jump over to Bitcoin. So a lot to talk about today, guys. Like we said, short term analysis, macro analysis, and this is one of those videos where you really have to look at the context behind what is happening. And before we get into it, we have to understand that the high time frame technical indicators are lagging to a degree, okay? So what happens in the short term develops, occurs, and if the price strength is able to sustain strength for long enough on the short term, eventually that then translates to the higher time frame. It is not the other way around. So when we see high time frame weakness, the high time frame weakness, according to our technical indicators on the high time frame, doesn't translate to the short term. It is the opposite actually that does occur. So we have to keep that in mind when we're doing technical analysis on massive high time frames, like two weeks and monthlies, because it is definitely lagging. So coming back to the point, the short term drives the price action. If we break above short term resistances, if we start to reverse on the short term, eventually if that is sustained for long enough, it translates over to the high time frame charts and thus the high time frame technical indicators start to express what we have seen developed over the course of a few weeks or a few days, depending on what time frame you want. So keep that in mind when we go through this analysis today. So starting on the two week. The two week chart is showing us something we haven't seen actually for a long time. And that is going to be, actually let's just go ahead and collapse this for a second. That is going to be a red dot print on the market cipher B for the first time, okay? Which is sitting over the overbought territory on the market cipher B, which is sitting over the 60 point on the histogram since we actually printed the March 2021, 29th of March, top on Bitcoin at $60,000. So this is the first indication we have seen of a potential high time frame level that we have reached that is a macro and major level of resistance. If we look at the price action, we can see when did we print the green dot? We printed the green dot all the way down over here, which was the local low. Where was the local low corresponding with? If we drag a arrow across, the local low corresponded with this level, which is going to be the local, or should I say the all time high of the prior cycle, a major, major point of resistance. And now we are printing a red dot. Where does the red dot print 
correspond with? Well, it corresponds with this level, which is a major high time frame level of resistance. So we had support, we dragged support across, we had a green dot print, which is a positive momentum shift. We saw a macro continuation upwards. We have now reached an area of resistance, a red dot print. This is now going to be a significant area of exhaustion. Now, here is where it does come very important. Just because we have seen a red dot print now in the two week, doesn't mean the top's in for Bitcoin and we're going into a new bear market. That's not what it means, okay? It means we have reached a significant area of macro resistance, strong enough to the point where the momentum which has been developing during this uptrend has now flipped negative on the two week. So for it to flip positive again, it would have to break through that major area of resistance in which the exhaustion had actually developed from. So two things we need to understand from this. Number one, the overall two week chart is suggesting high time frame exhaustion, okay? The exhaustion is indicating that we have gone from a long, one year long period of strong positive momentum, okay? This is strong positive momentum. We are still in a uptrend. What we are seeing here now is the first indication of that strong positive momentum starting to exhaust. So this is what we call, okay, weakening positive momentum. The reason the momentum is still positive is because we are above the zero point on the histogram, okay? So even if we come down over here, technically this is overall positive momentum provided the RSI trend line doesn't break below the mid level on the histogram. If it breaks below this level, that will be an entrance into a negative momentum period. This will be very, very bad, okay? So provided we remain above that midline, we are technically still positive. Therefore, this is an indication of exhaustion at resistance and could tell us we could see a pullback. Now, coming back to what we've said already, it is less relevant what happens on the higher time frames because what happens on the smaller time frame starts to develop and actually gains strength or weakness. And then that, if occurs over a period of time, then expands and it's translated and expressed on the higher time frame charts. So we move down to a weekly chart over here. We can see again, a very similar scenario. We saw that red dot print, that red dot printed on that exact candle of the break or retest of 48K. We have since seen positive momentum start to fall down, okay? We have seen the price section retest an area of support. So then that takes us down to what we've been talking about recently, which is going to be that daily chart. And this is probably the most important level that we are watching for the chart as it really indicates whether or not, and this is really important while we're talking about it, it indicates or it will show whether or not the negative momentum shift, okay, or should I say the uh, exhaustion in the positive momentum we have seen over the last year, that's a better way to say it, is actually developing now to a point where the trend is starting to flip downward okay this is going to be very important because if we lose this level of support the 38 to 40k range it would indicate that the exhaustion that we have been developing from that 48k range has been strong enough to break a level of support and actually flip the trend for bitcoin into a high time frame downtrend now we are currently sitting in a short-term downtrend, as you know, we have been in a short-term downtrend ever since the 48k retest. We rejected from 48,000. We are in a short-term downtrend. According to this area is resistance. The trend has now continued downward from resistance. Thus, we are in a downtrend. However, if we look at the higher time frame, we are in a one-year long uptrend and we are above a major area of support. And thus, the overall macro trend is still up. So we have a short-term downtrend, a macro uptrend. If we were to lose this level, it would validate that the exhaustion we are seeing develop on the higher time frames and the short term is now strong enough to break down from this level of support and push the price lower. This brings us to another very important which we'll touch on in, uh, in message, which we'll touch on in just a second. But going to the daily chart to wrap up this momentum analysis, we can see on the daily chart a very important level we need to close above is approaching very rapidly. And that is going to be the current 
RSI trend line. This represents, okay, a cluster of price action, which is this cluster of price action here, the cluster of price action between the 40k support and the 48k resistance. We can see during this period of price action, the moment momentum has been dropping. This entire area, the momentum has been dropping. Thus, if we want to see, and again, like I said, the momentum has been dropping in this entire area for two months, and because it's been falling in two months, we have started to see that weakness develop on the high time frame charts. That is why the high time frame charts have printed a red dot. That is why we are seeing exhaustion on the high time frames, because we have been exhausting here on the daily for an extended period of time. Now, if we are able to break above this RSI trend line, that would indicate for the first time during this range, momentum has flipped back positive, and that could result in a continuation upwards for both momentum and and thus, as we know, momentum is leading for price action. We could see the price action rise. Very, very important to keep your eye on. And if that occurs, we could see that high time frame weakness begin to dissipate over the coming weeks as Bitcoin approaches 48K and uh, $46,000 again. So really quickly, as per a momentum standpoint, the daily, the weekly, the high time frame charts are starting to exhaust. The daily chart is showing us signs of bearish exhaustion, which could be an indication that the bulls are attempting to regain control as we did reach an area of support. We'll come back into this in more detail in just a moment. If the area of support is able to hold long enough, if the price action is able to gain enough strength, we could see momentum flip positive on the daily chart again, which if sustained, could then flip those high time frame charts, which are showing bearish exhaustion uh, bullish exhaustion to a point at which they are beginning to show strength again and the price will continue upwards on the higher time frame. Now this brings us to another important point guys. Support is support until it is not. And like we say always, support isn't just a random level of chart. Support is made up of real life people, buyers and sellers, pending orders, orders on the market book. It is made up of real life people. Now, for $40,000 to $38,000 to break, and it has shown incredible resilience, it has shown incredible resilience so far, the narrative needs to shift, right? What we know for certain is in April, we have the halving event. We know that in April, we have the halving event. We know that a break over 48,000 is going to be a major bullish trigger. We know that the April halving event is a bullish trigger. And we know that a loss of 38,000 is a bearish trigger that will push the price lower. So the question is, for everyone who has already bought, for all of the investors currently, whether it be the ETFs, whether it be people who have accumulated during the ETF period, leading up to the ETF period, into the current period, they are very much aware that we have two major bullish triggers coming. So the question is, why would they sell if, they know they just need to hold another month and a half to two months for the bull market to start kicking in. So what I'm trying to show to you is the narrative is still bullish. We have the halving event. We have a major resistance we're breaking above. If we break above those levels and we reach the halving event, the price of Bitcoin will go up over a long period of time. So for this area to lose support, we need the overwhelming majority of people who have bought in this range or have bought prior decide it is not worth to hold anymore and they need to sell and thus this level of support will break. That would require the bullish narrative of the halving event, and this 48k resistance to be eliminated. So if narrative shifts, and if narrative shifts, people emotion shift, the people emotion shifts, their actions then result in a gain selling. So keep that in mind, guys. Support is not just randomly support. Support is made up of buyers and sellers. And we've seen macro levels of support. These macro levels of support actually have narrative behind them that is holding them up. It's not just a level. We can't just say Bitcoin's going to 20,000. Why would people push Bitcoin to 20,000? What would drive the price action to go there? What would be the main driver of the price action to push it down to those levels? We have to think about those things when we're looking for targets, just as we have to think about those things when we're looking for macro high time frame targets. We need to think about it when we think about the short term too, okay? So moving over to the short term price action, guys, we can see at the moment, not all that much is happening. We have some major levels we are watching out for. Again, a major 44.25k level of resistance is a bullish trigger. A break above this level will result in a continuation to 46, and that will flip the positive momentum on the daily chart very bullish. But as you can see, we are approaching this level of major resistance, right? This is an area of major resistance. Um, we are seeing that in the price action as the price action is beginning to consolidate. Uh, quite aggressively sideways in this range. We can look at the BRPB. We can see that we have a whole heap of resistance 
in this area. And again, like I said just then, the price action is reflecting that. If we look at the current price action on the short term, we are in a uptrend. The uptrend is represented by this diagonal trend line. We do have confluence and we have confirmation of this trend now using the RSI. We have the equal lows on the RSI and we can match those equal lows to the equal lows on the price action. So we do know this is going to be representing our overall momentum in this cluster of price action. Momentum is still positive, price action is still in an uptrend. The trend is your friend until it ends. If we see the momentum breakdown negative, that will be an indication the price action is going to take a correction back down to this local low range. If we see a retest of that local low range, this would be an indication of weakness. However, it would not result in a higher time frame correction unless this local low level is lost. If 41,700 is lost, we would then expect a correction deeper into the 40,500 range. And again, if we lose 40,500, we expect a correction to 38. Both of these levels acting as support. And again, again, this level here acting as a support. So you can see we have three levels below us, which are support before a break of 38K. We have a current uptrend. We have current positive momentum. We have one level of resistance above us just by the sheer laws of mathematics. There is one resistance and three supports. The most likely direction while we are in an uptrend is still going to be upwards. If we do see indications of weakness, primarily a breakdown of the RSI, that would make me lead, that would lead me to believe the current uptrend we are in is going to break and the price action will reject back down to our support level. And only at that point will I be looking at short-term bearishness if we do lose that level of support as we would expect a correction down to this level of support to fill that gap in the VRPV. So keep your eyes on that guys. At the moment it is looking neutral it is looking relatively strong we are starting to see a little bit of exhaustion as we do retest the support line but support is support until it is not if we do see a breakdown of the rsi expect a correction on the short term and again this level is going to be a major area of support determining whether or not the weakness that will be developing through the breakdown of the trend will result in a correction to a high time frame support or not. If we do break 44.25, we would need to see that daily RSI cross. And as a result, we would see the daily RSI cross, which would push the price action back into this range, guys. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope you learned something. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Check out the Crypto Academy courses. It is a 10 unit course. It is made by myself and Wolves of Crypto. More information, you can go ahead and contact us on this email. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.